Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the Jazz Core Dev Weekly Sync Up for the Jazz IP Fest, Jazz IP Jazz IP LB meetings of July 16. Uh, the last time we synced up was two weeks ago. Uh, last week we were kind of busy with all the with all the meetings. A lot of stuff got done. Not necessarily a lot of code, but here we are again to continue uh, uh, doing things. Today, special. Um, Core Dev Sync app because we are trying out PeerPad. We already found a bunch of problems this morning. We already fixed a bunch of things, but uh, we are still struggling a little bit with it. So bear with us. Uh, we'll try to make this as smooth as possible for everyone, or at least work with what we have. Uh, for all the bugs that you find, errors in the console, things that you think it would be nicer, please open issues on PeerPad repo, which sits on IPFS shipyard. Oh, do I sound with a lot of weird noises? I think it's because you're playing on the table, so you're drumming. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, that's because I'm excited. <laughs> no, I like it. <laughs> Wait, I can also close the door. He's gone. Uh, here, here I am. Okay, I'll, I got a, a robot arm. And okay, I'm taking too much time. Let's go to the updates. Same procedure as usual. I'll start with mine. Any questions? So far so good. Any? <laughs> I'll put my hands on my head so that I don't knock anything. <laughs> oh, Fulker, go ahead. Uh, we don't have a note taker yet. He's right. <laughs> uh, who volunteers to be a note taker, which is especially important given that we might have some hiccups with your pet. Fulker, thank you so much. I'll write here Volker or VMX, and you should see that update over the real time peer to peer web. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Yes, yes, it's working. Congrats to the VVC group for making peer path. Okay, I'll start first. So, yeah, last week was really um, like the IP Pass and peer dev meetings. A lot of stuff got done. We already talked about leading IP Pass Alliance. Uh, we released just IP Fest CO30 live. That was exciting. Lots of things to learn for next time, actually. <laughs> but it was exciting. Uh, and then um, during the weekend, I just started thinking of like, the reboot of IPSend. IPSend is kind of like the search and SH, but of the decentralized web. I, I want to make it work again. Like, it, it was kind of nice. And we have so many things on IPFS, JS, now that we can use that we don't need to do IPFS anymore. So, so I, I'm working on it as like, kind of like my old slash new pet project per se, like interesting demo for the web community. Uh, I've been reviewing OKRs. People, please give me feedback on the OKRs. Let's get it done this week. We need to have it finished by Wednesday. This is, this is really important. Everyone should have done and frozen their OKRs by this Wednesday. Um, you, you might have seen comments from me on spreadsheets or GitHub repos. Um, I, with the, the release of Go IPFS, I did the release dance of like the NPM modules. So now if you install IPFS daemon controller, you get 0.4.16, not 0.4.15 anymore. And with that, I started doing interrupt testing. Uh, I, some tests still pass, but I, now I'm seeing a lot of failures from Go, specifically it's always Go to JS, of files bigger than one meg. And so the other way around, it doesn't happen. But go to just and we know there's a lot of like stream bugs updates, so we need really to spend some time debugging what's happening there. Um, yeah, essentially we also need to find ways to encourage the GoIPFS team to run an interrupt test before doing a release, because this didn't have to happen this way. Um, but more on that soon. Uh, yeah, and then we have an important event at the end of the month, the Centralized Web Summit. Totally recommend people like attending or at least watching the live stream. And we're going to have two workshops there. So I, I'm like designing those and like crafting the content, helping others like um, to deliver. And, and then we have the JSIP Festival website, which has made a lot of progress, but still needs some work to get done. So I've been reviewing it. Um, I, I'm really blocked on this interrupt test thing. Like right now, like. I'm as good as anyone else to like really debug it. Like there is a lot of things there. We know that the stream monitors uh, was the things that changed in GoPFS, and, mm -hmm. and, and we need to fix that because it means like we cannot download files larger than one meg from GoPFS in useful time. Like they finish, but it's just taking like one order or two orders of magnitude more time than it was before. It's really obnoxious. Um, 
And then next, uh, let's finish the OKRs, continue just a bit of you, continue work the workshops. Uh, I'm visiting London, so hi people. So I'll be around if, if you don't want to hang up and, and hack together. And, and yeah, I want to explore like getting IP sent into a state that we can like share with the rest of the community so that people can like start publishing websites to IP pass very easily. Um, and also uh, I've been like chatting about like the idea of creating a workshopper for IP pass. Let's see if we can like make something interesting in a day uh, of being together. Um, but yeah, that's what is on my mind and what I plan to do this week. Any questions for me on all of these things? All right, people, it seems like I speak very clearly. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's go next to Alan Shaw. Hi. Uh, okay, so me, what did I do? Uh, so I went to the dev meeting in Berlin and I met all of your beautiful faces for the first time in real life. Uh, and not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, and it was great. So it was super awesome to see you all. Um, and yeah, so yeah, like David said, released JSIB first for 30 live. It almost went without a hitch up until the last minute. Uh, but yeah, it, it went, it went okay. It went pretty well. Uh, so that's, that's super exciting news. Um, I spent the rest of the week looking into why pre-start was being called twice uh, on JS IPFS. Um, so when you start or instantiate a new JS IPFS uh, node, you can, you have like various options to in it or, or, uh, or you don't have to start the node. Um, and uh, you asked a question about what star actually means. And I think for the most part, that is it being online or offline. But the, um, the way the code was structured meant that um, independent of how you, like, because you could, there's combinations for, so you can just like create it, create an instance and not initialize it and not start it. You can create it and initialize it and not start it. You can create it and initialize it and start it. Uh, and in all of those uh, kind of combinations, uh, the way the code was structured meant that pre-start was being called, uh, but in most of those combinations, pre-start was being called twice. Um, so that's probably not great for, for the node uh, in terms of, well, I don't know if it was um, messing up some other bits and pieces, but in terms of performance, I guess it's, we don't want to be recreating things um, twice. So hopefully minor performance bump um, by kind of addressing that. Um, so that's, that was what I was doing most this week. Uh, after the meeting. Um, I'm not blocked on anything at the moment. Uh, at the weekend, I did a little hack on JS IPFS to add um, a CID base option for uh, to allow people to actually get Space32 encoded CIDs out of IPFS when you add things to it. Um, and that's important because if we're going to have uh, CIDs in web browsers as uh, as an origin, then it, they they need to be case insensitive, and Base32 looks to be the kind of best option for that at the moment. So, um, we the idea is to eventually move to Base32 encoded CIDs by default and version, and by virtue of that, having a V1 CIDs. Uh, but this, what I, what I hacked on was the first step, which actually leaves the defaults as they are, but allows you to add things to IPFS and um, specify command line options so that when you get your output back, the CIDs that are printed to your console or delivered to your browser are in, uh, encoded using Base32 um, multi -goal deck. Um, so I demoed that on the all hands call, so I guess you could watch it there. Um, uh, yeah, so my next, uh, my next kind of actions are to finish off that. There's a whole bunch of stuff around that that broke while I was doing it. So I just need to uh, clean all of that, that up, um, especially pinning because pinning is, is very much assuming um, base 58 encoded hashes in the pen set, pin set file. Um, so that's going to need some, uh, some stuff done to it. Um, but it, it's, it's going to be a big job and something that I will be doing over the quarter. 
Um, so yeah, like I said, base spoke to CID as default. Um, and in kind of tandem with that, I want to continue to stabilize the JSIBFS and JSIBFS API tests. Um, that's kind of work in progress. They are getting better. Uh, uh, I think they're getting better. Uh, and um, yeah, and then and then once they're kind of stable to a kind of something that I'm happy with, um, I'll be able to then look into why they take so long to execute. Um, and so I wanted to identify where those bottlenecks are and then um, make a plan for kind of dealing with that. Um, and then the other OKR I've got is to create a 10-day uh, a no-crash JS IPFS daemon that can be used as a bootstrap node. So that will be super rad by the end of the um, by the end of the quarter. Um, but that's kind of far future <laughs> next for me. Um, but that's all from me. Thank you for listening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for the update. By the way, next, uh, and I guess just to make it clear to everyone, should be the things that you plan for next week, not necessarily the entire quarter. Uh, otherwise, it like becomes like you you lose focus. Uh, but but it's good. I know that you are thinking about all of these things. I guess like the, the feedback is let's like pick a couple rather than all the key results at the same time. <laughs> otherwise, you you might be be overwhelmed. Uh, on the bottlenecks for execution time, I think like if you like check my issue on IPFS DCTL, uh, if we create a way to spin multiple demons at the same time and create pre-generated peer IDs beforehand, like just like a 200 peer IDs that we generate once and then we reuse it for tests because we, we don't ever use more than like 10, maybe 20 nodes. So if we have 200, it, we have plenty of nodes for now in the future. Uh, and that will cut probably like 50 or more percent of the execution time. And, and, and I'm guessing like you probably can like finish that in like a day or two. And, and that will save you a lot of time for everything else that you are doing. Just like spinning up demons faster. Um, then I would say given the, the schedule of the quarter, like the timeline of the quarter, like focusing on the base 32 CID migration is going to be one of the most important things for the, the web summit. Uh, just because of all the conversations that we'll have a chance to have there for all of the browser people, et cetera. And so, um, like, also check in with yourself, like, if you think it's possible to do it in two weeks, like, to have all the tests, all the migrations, all the things. And, and I would say to that, like, cut the, the execution time by 50% with the daemon generation and then focus all your attention on the base 32 things um, and, and make it happen. Uh, it will be very, very valuable uh, for a lot of the discussions, right? Like seeing it happening live. It's not just like an idea. It's not just like an RFC. It's actually code that works that people can see working on the browser. The the other thing, like in a, a bonus point for that whole endeavor is that like if you could add support for Unix FS for raw leaves. Right now we have raw Unix FS nodes, which are like just a buffer with a Unix FS wrapping. But like if you have just like a raw leaf, which is like the full block is data of the file, that not only saves overhead, but also gives us compatibility with files added to the URL store of GoIPFS. That, that's also like just like a simple trick because with this idea, you check the type uh, of the leaf. That's, that's simple enough. Um, and, and we'll add support for URL store added files to just IPFS. But, but I can explain more on this as sync so that we don't steal the time out here. Th does like my proposal for focus make sense to you? Yes, yes. All right, cool. Let's go next. Uh, any questions for Alan first? All right, thank you. Um, Volker. All right, so I was also at the uh, deaf meetings in Berlin. And there were great discussions about, so we had a deep dive about graph sync. And it was great. So there's also like a no some documentation. I feel like the pull request with the details what is discussed. We've also found a vulnerability in IPFS, which is not fixed yet, and therefore not disclosed, but it's a good one. So we found this during the discussions. And um, we also had a discussion about IPLD and IPLD search. I've also linked the issue with the stuff there. You can just read it. And next, I will uh, yeah prepare stuff for the D Web Summit, um, and 
Yeah, I also prepare for the Phosphor G conference, which is another conference end of August, but I will do this in parallel because, yeah, there needs to be some wrap up time. And yeah, um, that's what I probably do most week. All right, that's all for me. All right, thank you so much for the update. Uh, I don't have any specific questions. Does anyone else have questions for Booker? Um, I would just like, uh, was that a hand vash? No. Um, I was just bringing up like a lot of people really need the DAG API and I, right now I don't see any thread of like really designing the DAG API. There's like just like multiple fragmented conversations. We didn't have the time to have the discussion at the, the dev meetings, but given that it's becoming like such a blocker for so many people, it would be great for someone. And, and I know that you're a pretty easy blocker, but like just putting this on your mind. So someone to just like coalesce all those conversations and like create the, the DAG API to rule them all uh, discussion. Uh, so that we can have something that go IPFS and just IPFS implements, especially now that we are doing more and more interrupt tests. But yeah, that, just putting that on your radar and on your mind. Cool. Okay, next up, uh, no questions for Volker? Sounds good. And next up, we have Hugo. Hi, guys. So, I also was in the dev meetings the whole week. We had some conversations about the JSIPFS IU site. And this week I'll, I'll be on that, basically implementing some of the stuff we, did, we discussed. We, today we already did the, the planning regarding every topic we came up in, the, in Berlin. And we already have a plan. I would like to ask David to um, have the, the copy that is still missing until Friday because we kind of want to uh, on the next, not this one, but the, the uh, next week on the Tuesday, uh, on Tuesday, we'll like to have like a complete production ready version of the site. So we have some kind of buffer to iterate a little bit is, if something is wrong. Uh, so we, if we can get the copy until Friday, it would be nice. I'll be uh, mostly uh, doing the um, getting started thing that we talked, and also OKRs and some repo maintenance. Uh, this week I'll probably have some time off, so this is probably it. Sounds good. Uh, makes a lot of sense. I can get you the copy till Friday for sure. And I also uh, will prepare that draft illustration for the service worker section. Um, let's re continue using that document of like the fast iteration and flash feedback document to keep updated like both sides. Like you tell me what you have discussed and planned and, and I'll give you feedback directly on the doc. That like works very well because like, I get all the notifications on my inbox. Um, but, but yeah. So you're talking about the Google Docs. Yeah, yeah, that, that Google Doc that we have, yeah. So um, this way we are all in sync. Perhaps it might make sense to bring Pedro also to this call so that he, he can be part of like this update. Um, but, but I can ping him for that. Yeah, sure. One thing uh, that we talked, that uh, probably, uh, I'll write that on, on the Google Docs, but I'll just say it. If it takes to, too much time to do the uh, um, gateway service worker uh, graphics and section. We can probably like add to the features section a small uh, like a new item for the gateway, and that mm -hmm. will probably be faster just to get the, the th this thing shipped and next week. Uh, but it, you probably will sync with Agatha, so it's just a suggestion. If it, that's faster. Uh, I think it's a uh, uh, might be a solution. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that sounds good. Like definitely, like prepare to not have it, but I think also we can have it. So we, we can try to do both, and then uh, whatever looks better. Cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you just like repeat a little bit of like ripple maintenance? Uh, I'm not sure if I got quite got, got it. Just going through the the ripples the, that I am now. Uh, maintainer and just make sure that everything is working fine um, understand everything that's going on there go through the issues stuff like that 
All right, cool. Okay, uh, yeah, th that's great. And that's something like we all should do. Like there's a lot of new issues, like let's room the waffle boards, like let's tag the uh, label, the issues, uh, let, let's like review the PRs, etc. cetera. Um, there's a lot of people waiting on our feedback. Sorry, I will not clap on my table. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, any questions for Hugo or shall we go to Jacob? All right, Jacob's time. Yeah, uh, last week, dev meetings in Berlin. Um, we also released some updates to libp2p because there was a bug in um, the cat DHT when it was trying to read when there's no bytes there. So if you run into any issue with a uh, poll reader where you start seeing like red zero instead of X bytes, um, let me know and I can help with that. It usually means you are trying to read data when there's no data that's expected to come back. Um, but that should be working all the way through JSI BFS now, so hopefully no issues. Um, I'm not currently blocked, but I know there are some blockers on the MDNS um, spec, so I think that hasn't been touched in about five months, but there are more conversations around that, so I'll probably try to resurrect and get a final answer on that, um, hopefully uh, this week or next. Um, and then I will be working this week on looking through the peer delivery our no, that's wrong. peer discovery um, and content routing modules to figure out what's needed to get those all wrapped up um, for this quarter. I'm going to catch up on PRs that are open from last week. I know I have uh, at least one or two sitting in switch to get merged. Um, and then try to get everything that's still in my head um, documented from the Berlin meetings that isn't already documented. Um, and then I'll also continue conversations um, with the rest of the lib P2P team on getting the, the, Damon's going. Any questions? Sounds good to me. I think like peer discovery, you actually mean peer routing. Um, but I know it's too many peer or something. Uh, too many words, but awesome. Yeah, like in a note on like knowledge dumps, because like so many, so many things happen, it might be valuable for you, like each one of us to even just like do pull requests to be like placeholders of all the discussions that you remember. Because otherwise, if you like are waiting to finish one brain dump and then the other brain dump, you might just like forget all, all of them that happened. And, and so just kind of like leave notes around that like to remind you that like, you have more notes about certain topic um, so that we don't, we don't lose that information. And that is it. Any more questions for Jacob? Cool, okay. We have four minutes left. Um, I think we are still on time. Pasco, go. you're next. Hello, uh, so I've been working in the IPNS. I managed to finish the remaining optional parameters that I was left. Uh, I also added logging and uh, wrangling and uh, cache as well. Then uh, the lip peer to peer OKRs were also froze. Uh, I created today a PR for the interface IPFS core with the IPNS tests as well. And uh, as uh, almost all of you, I've been in, the, in Berlin last week. Uh, I'm uh, kind of uh, blocked right now with the interrupt test as well. Uh, basically, I'm trying to test IPNS uh, in the interrupt, but uh, uh, I have two problems. One is when I try to use a, a create a repo that was used in Go, and then try to use it in GS, it is simply broken. And uh, previously there is a, a test for it, but it is being skipped right now. I tried to figure out why. I, I went to GitHub and I uh, saw that Dimitri was the last person to edit that. So I couldn't manage to talk to him as well. I'm not sure why it is uh, skipped. And uh, I also talked in uh, Berlin with uh, Victor and Stephen about that, but they also couldn't uh, help me. Uh, yeah, and, I, and uh, the other problem is in the gs to go repo that uh, I can uh, use the repo in that uh, interaction, but uh, my solution is not working. I don't know if it's a problem of uh, the data store is not exactly the same or not. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, go ahead, finish. I thought you have, you have finished. Go ahead. Okay, and uh, for next, I, I will continue with IPNS uh, plus interrupt, and I also want to go to through my repos and uh, label all the issues that they have. There are lots of issues with li without labels there, 
and uh, if I have time, I would also like to continue the spec for IPN. And uh, that's it. Sounds good. So like, a lot of the problems that you've described are essentially because we don't have like a proper up-to-date spec of Apitas repo. And then that's beaten many of us. Like if you, find, if you find notes over the code saying, go Apitas broke the Apitas repo again, or like just change without noticing. And so we were always playing this like cat and mouse game till we, we got our, uh, essentially, is that it? Uh, that's it. Like we, like chasing like if has repo changes without having tests, without having notifications, just like make it very painful for us to keep moving um, after when we actually didn't need to change the repo at all. And so like on 0.4.16, there was another repo change. And actually this one really affects you because they changed the location of IPNS records. And so this is where we actually now need a really update from Steven. And Steven knows this very well. Like he knows exactly um, like what changed there. Uh, what we also need, in order for us to move forward is a repo migrations tool. So you find an issue on just PFS that describes it's like, we need a tool to do repo migrations. There is one for desktop. So there is one written in Go that works for any desktop node. The thing is the browser. In the browser, you have nothing to, repo, to do repo migrations. And every time we do change the repo, what happens is people just like open 30,000 issues on just request saying that we broke everything because now their daemon is saying that the repo is not compatible anymore, which is true. The repo, when it changes, is not compatible anymore. What we need to have is a tool to migrate the repo that is inside the browser, which doesn't exist right now. And, and so it's kind of like now, like uh, between um, uh, a sword and the wall, like what to do first. Essentially, like we need to like, understand what changed on IPNS so that you can continue with your tests and, and you can continue with your tests locally to update the repo version for the whole uh, ecosystem, we need the repo migrations tool. And this is something that perhaps you can take on as well. Uh, again, the code is already written for Go. You can find it on FS repo migrations repo. Um, like you just have to translate it to JavaScript. That's it. Um, make sense? Okay, I will check the, that repo and if I have any question, I will reach you again. Yeah, so check what I just posted on, uh, on Slack, on, on Zoom. Um, okay. Um, one is this like test that is on Go IPFS, the interrupt tests, and repo migrations. Uh, and the other issue is this one, just like track through there or put questions there for the repo migrations utility. Okay, so if I need to ask something about the repo, I should uh, talk with uh, Steven, right? Steven, on the, like, what changed from 0.4.15 to 0.4.16? Like, wh what was the change specifically on IPNS records? And it's something about namespaces on a, the US level DB. Um, yeah. It's just like, it was, he told me like very briefly in like less than 10 seconds, so I, I don't know the, 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 the details. Um, but they do have already the repo migrations done. So you can even like inspect what the tool does, like the FS repo migrations tool does, and see what changed exactly. Okay, uh, thanks. Okay, so repo migrations. Check this repo, also posting here. Okay, so that should help you. And, uh, but like, of course, if any have any question, just like put it on the issue or ping me or Steven, we will help you. Sweet. Okay. Any questions for Vasco? We are two minutes over, but we still have one more update. And then we have some other notes. Well, I guess like the notes about this repo thing. Uh, go ahead, Machi. Um, so the one thing I've done in these two weeks is uh, build a tiny tool called Peer Tunnel, which basically uh, publishes local hosts over HTTPS. And uh, the other thing I did is uh, I found a few vulnerabilities. I don't know if they are really that much of a deal, but they could be, and reported them, and that's all I did in these two weeks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, have you finished? Go ahead and finish if you want. Um, I will. Uh, I haven't yet decided what I will do next, but I'll probably do something. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Uh, two things. One is peer tunnel, awesome. Like I think you should bring that up to the IPFS all end and give a demo so that people know about it. Uh, on the reporting vulnerabilities, that is also like doubly awesome. Uh, we are actually like 
on progress to like fix them. Uh, as a, a note for like security in general, you don't want to say <laughs> you don't want to say on a public call like oh I, like there is vulnerabilities because like if there is no fix, then like the users like the users don't understand what what is happening and and, and like what the users need is like first to fix uh, a CG like with the severity. Uh, like saying it's a, it's a high vulnerability, a low vulnerability, and I can say like it's a low vulnerability. Like you have to have some very specific case, and it will not necessarily uh, hinder uh, whatever it's running right now. But uh, but then again, like to everyone, it's running just like PFS in production. Just like PFS is alpha, it hasn't been security audited yet. You should not put it on production like with very sens like with sensitive data at all if you are doing so. Be careful always. Uh, but yeah, for next time, like use the, the private security channel. Like it's called a responsible disclosure program. Like it's where you, like you responsibly disclosure a vulnerability to a private set of people, the fix happens. And then we, you responsibly disclosure that to everyone with a fix already done. So that like no one gets beaten, right? Because if JSIP Pass was now run, like was already 1.0 and running in like millions of services, now you just like put a huge bounty on everyone that is running on it by saying that there is vulnerabilities on the public call. But, but then again, like super thumbs up for like finding them and reporting them. It's it just like, we should like be careful in which channels we publish these before they are fixed. Make sense? Make sense to everyone actually? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Cool, we'll have the fixes soon and the CV published. Uh, we typically also publish an advisory to the node security project so that people are using NPM to install modules can then get the, the advisory from that. It happened in the past, we did that uh, in the past, you can find our CVs there. Cool, thank you. I think this is all, we were five minutes over. I'm sorry for taking extra of your time. Any other, oh, Alex is here. Alex is joined. Alex, do you have an uh, update for us? Yeah, didn't the meeting read back to five o'clock? Say it again. Uh, anyway, I just thought, I thought the meeting moved back to five o'clock. That's what the GitHub issue said. That's why I just turned up. Uh, no, no. Uh, like, uh, so on note on that, always subscribe to the IPFS community calendar. That's like the source of truth. And and like the the um, the issue was updated right after. It was just a full copy paste. All right. Okay. Cool. Anyway, so uh, yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, shipped MFS. Woohoo! That's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, and then last week, yep, obviously the developer uh, meetings. <clears throat> and then, uh, so yeah, so Arcady uh, uh, showed a, like, brought up an issue with some of the streaming. Um, and what it is, is uh, you can import nodes into Go saying raw leaves. Um, which is fun because if you so uh, yeah anyway so it's, it's not really supported in UXFS so I'm adding support for raw leaves. Um, there's a bit of a misunderstanding because if you if you use MFS to add a file in Go, then you get the leaves become UNIXFS raw nodes. So they're UNIXFS nodes with a with a type of raw. So they're still wrapped in a pretty buff. Um, if you use IPFS files, actually sorry, if you just use IPFS add, then your leaf nodes become UNIXFS file nodes with chunks of the file in. Uh, unless you say raw leaves, in which case the leaf nodes are just buffers uh, with file data. So that's uh, that was new information. Um, so yeah, so I'm adding support for that. So I've got to work in Unix FS. Uh, I've, on Cascade, I've just finished, I've just got all the test passing for MFS with that as well. Because what it then transpired is in order to use raw leaves, you have to have uh, support for CID version one. Uh, and I was just kind of passing everything through uh, and it wasn't really working properly. Um, so I've got that working probably with MFS now. So now I'm running the JS IPFS tests and then interop tests. And I'm sure you guys have that. So that should be done tomorrow, basically. It's, it's kind of, the majority of the work is there. Um, after that, I'm going to pick up the NPM on IPFS stuff, uh, which should be quite good. So I want to, so, so we need to run a service uh, to keep the uh, NPM uh, registry up to date. Do we have anywhere we can, can run arbitrary Docker images because I don't really want to mess with servers if I can help it. Like if there's we, like an ETS cluster or something, that would be great. We do have machines with a lot of like storage space that we can uh, give you access. Just like chat with the infrastructure team, uh, mm -hmm. and they will. Um, in the past, I already used them to like add npm to IPFS. Cool. As long as it's like automatable, repeatable, you know, non-mutable deployments and whatever, 
easy to monitor. Well, exactly, exactly. <laughs> cool, yeah, that'll, that'll be me. Cool, thank you so much. Okay, so first, please uh, add your notes to the peer path um, so that we capture everything. Uh, I, think or... have, I think it might have finished syncing by now. <laughs> I, just, I just watched uh, everybody's edits come in in slow motion. Excellent. Great. It's actually a great like feature. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, my point is there is UnixFS like leaf types, there is UnixFS raw types, which is like that MFS virtual normal files. And then there is IPLD raw nodes, which is what the URL store uses. We talked about those a little bit ago with Alan. So there's like three ways to have a chunk of data on IPFS. And they are all the same, but they are all represented differently. And UnixFS has to understand all of them. Uh, so um, Alan, just to make sure that like, I didn't confuse you with the update that Alex just gave, there is still the need for like IPLD raw nodes to be supported by UnixFS engine. It seems like Alex is already handling the raw and the and the lift types of UnixFS itself. Does this make sense, or am I confusing everyone? Um, I'm handling the raw, the actual raw leaves as well, just the just the buffers as well as the ones that are wrapped in. Uh, so do you mean like raw leaves as in something that doesn't have like any UnixFS dot Marshall, like just like the the raw IPLD node? Yeah, just the raw IPLD name. Oh, okay, it's excellent. Perfect. Okay, so let's work for, well, <laughs> for Alan uh, on adding base three two. Cool. All right, so that's it. I hope I didn't confuse people. Uh, we should have better dots. <laughs> Any other thing? Oh, right, we have 10 minutes over. We need to finish here. Some people have to go to the next call. Thank you all for coming. This was a good update. Lots of things. Uh, last week was very exciting. I think this is going to be the best quarter yet. Uh, and yeah, see you on the interwebs, or if not, till last week. Till last week. Till next week. <laughs> Go team. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Uh, Stop recording.